Kelly Lee. She's from Philadelphia. Thank you. Republican. Uh, voted for Donald Trump in 2016. Undecided now. Hey, Kelly, how are you? Hi, Mr. Biden. My question is about the coronavirus vaccine yes. or potential. Uh, Senator Harris stated that she absolutely would not take a vaccine from President Trump. And of course, we all know it's not President Trump that would create this vaccine. It would be doctors and scientists that presumably we all trust. So my question for you is, if a vaccine were approved by between now and the end of the year, would you take it? And if you were to become president, would you mandate that everyone has to take it? Two things. Number one, President Trump talks about things that just aren't accurate about everything from vaccines. We're going to have one right away. It's going to happen and so on. The point is that if the scientists, if the body of scientists say that this is what is ready to be done and there, it's, it's been tested, it's gone through the three phases, yes, I would take it. I'd encourage people to take it. But President Trump says things like, you know, everything from this crazy stuff he's walking away from now, inject bleach in your arm and that's going to work. I'm, I'm being a bit, I'm not being facetious. Though. I mean, he's actually said these things. And now Regeneron is the answer. That's going to cure everything. There's 500,000 doses. We've got a couple, you know, we have a, more than a few million people. Um, you know, and so, and most of the, if you notice, most of the companies who are developing these vaccines are, are working, they're making real progress. I meet with four leading scientists at least twice a week in the beginning, four times a week, giving us the detail on what kind of progress is being made. And right now, they do the right thing. When they run into a serious problem, they halt the test. They don't continue until they figure out what the problem was. They're not there yet. And the most scientists say it's not likely to have a vaccine that would be available until the beginning of next year, into the, into the spring of next year. And in the meantime, what I worry about is the same thing with Regeneron, which is, which is a useful antidote, not antidote, a useful uh, tool. But what's happening is there is no plan to figure out how to distribute it. How many, you know, we have 500,000, you know, uh, um, vials of it. Well, we don't have all the testing equipment. We don't have all the ability to get it to the people who need it. And what we should be doing now, and allegedly it's happening, but I've not seen it yet, nor the docs that I've talked to have seen it, there should be a plan when we have the vaccine, how do we distribute it? And once we get it, if it's safe, it's, if it's effective, will you mandate its use? The answer is, depending on how clear there's vaccines, they say, have a very positive impact and they're going to affect positively 85 percent of the American public. Or there's others say this vaccine is really the key. This is this is the, this is the golden key. It depends on the state of the nature of the vaccine when it comes out and how it's being distributed. That would depend on. But I would think that we should be talking about depending on the continuation of the spread of the virus, we should be thinking about making it mandatory. How could you enforce that? Well, you couldn't. That's the problem. Just like you can't, afford, you can't enforce measles. You can't, you can't come to school unless you have a measles shot. You know, you can't. But you can't say everyone has to do this. But you would, just like you can't mandate a mask. But you can say, you can go to every governor and get them all in a room, all 50 of them as president, and say, Ask people to wear the mask. Everybody knows. And if they don't, fine. And they don't, no, not fine. Then I go to every governor, I go to every mayor, I go to every councilman, I go to every local official. Say, mandate the mask. Man, say, this is what you have to do when you're out. Make sure you encourage it being done. Look, George, you and I know, and I think you do too as well, the words of a president matter. Absolutely. No matter whether they're good, bad, or indifferent, they matter. And when a president doesn't wear a mask or makes fun of folks like me when I was wearing a mask for a long time, then, as you know, people say, well, it mustn't be that important. But when a president says, I think this is very important, for example, I walked in here with this mask, but I have one of the M95 masks underneath it. I left it in, 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 uh, in, in my dressing room, the dressing room, the, the, the room I was in before I got here. Um, and so I think it matters what we say. And we're now learning that children are getting the virus, not with as, con as serious consequences. But we haven't, there's been no studies done yet on vaccines for children. 
So there's a long way to go, but we can make progress in the meantime and save lives. And the last point I'll make, if you, th if you listen to the head of the, of the CDC, he stood up and he said, you know, while we're waiting for a vaccine, and he held up a mask, you wear this mask, you'll save more lives between now and the end of the year than if we had a vaccine, than if we had a vaccine. It's estimated by every major study done from the University of Washington to Columbia that if, in fact, we wore masks, we could save between now and the end of the year 100,000 lives. And avoid lockdowns? And avoid lockdown, yes. You don't have to lock down if you're wearing the mask. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.